imagine you are at the doctor's office and you get some bad news. Your doctor tells you that you have cancer. It is aggressive and you must start treatment immediately. Now you've had a cigarette addiction for decades. And though this news is disturbing, you're not completely surprised. You pledge to your doctor that you will do whatever it takes to beat this illness. She tells you that the first step is quitting smoking. You promise that you will do whatever it takes to survive, including quitting your dangerous habit. But a few weeks pass and you return to your checkup with a new idea. What if you could continue smoking and fight your cancer at the same time? You write out a plan and you present it in your next visit. You will smoke net zero cigarettes. See, every time you do smoke, you will compensate for it by exercising and eating salad. Salad has a lot of vitamins and minerals that would help your condition, and you will go for a lot of jogs. In fact, the more cigarettes you smoke, the longer your jog will be. Now, your doctor uh, informs you that this gimmick will not work and that you already have cancer. This, this isn't an attempt to prevent future illness. You are sick right now and experiencing the symptoms today. But you, you are certain that you have cracked the code. You have figured it out and you do not need to rely on what the professionals say. You will jog and eat salad to make up for your continued tobacco habit. In fact, it won't even be like you are smoking at all. You're, you're going to bet your whole life on being right. Now, tell me this. Is your assumption correct? And does your logic be out decades of scientific research? Does your belief outweigh facts? Tell me then. Why does net zero emissions make sense to you? If you are already sick and you are just trying to survive and beat the illness that you already have, why would you still continue to do the exact actions that got you sick in the first place? That is where we are right now when it comes to climate policy and emissions goals. We are doing everything possible to trick ourselves into believing that we are fighting the cancer that is trying to kill us. When in reality, we are trying to negotiate with science. We are trying to reason with facts and we hope that we can make our gimmicks work. When you are already ill, you try to stop the habits that got you there. You change your life, you change your lifestyle, and you fight like hell to survive. Unfortunately, that is not the case when it comes to the climate crisis. Right now, we are arguing with experts that we do not need to end our habit of burning fossil fuels, but instead we can simply make up for it in other ways. This ruse that we are participating in will only lead to our destruction. You know, what is um, actually worse than the idea that we do not really need to stop our habit to survive our illness is the fact that the cigarettes that we consume are sponsored by our government. Yes, you have that right. We are using taxpayer dollars to fund our addiction. As published in The Guardian uh, this past October, the IMF found the production and burning of coal, oil, 
and gas was subsidized, this is globally, by $5.9 trillion in 2020. With not a single country pricing all its fuels sufficiently to reflect their supply and environmental costs. Experts said that the subsidies were adding fuel to the fire of the climate crisis at a time when rapid reductions in carbon emissions were urgently needed. The Guardian has said that the fossil fuel industry benefits from subsidies of 11 million US dollars every single minute according to the analysis by the International Monetary Fund. 11 million dollars every single minute. You know, tell me, what would, what would you do with 11 million US dollars every single minute? And how is it that we simultaneously expect the world to stop using fossil fuels when we pay the fossil fuel industry 5.9 trillion US dollars a year just to exist? Do we really expect renewable energy to be able to properly compete when we have already chosen the winners every single year? And you know, the fossil fuel industry, it, it has no plans to stop making money or stop production. And they can no longer ignore the very obvious symptoms of climate change either. The droughts, the floods, the fires, the tornadoes, the hurricanes and the like that get worse every year, everywhere. So instead of denying the existence of climate change, which was the standard operating procedure for decades, the existence of climate change, which is you know, now a proven fact, they just acknowledge its existence with a twist. To them, we can continue our current habits without consequences. All we have to do is make up for our current carbon emissions by doing something else that is positive. There's, there's no need to actually stop polluting. We only need to do other tasks such as planting trees or buying economic offsets to remediate the damage. You know, we will even invent some technologies that don't actually currently exist to capture our pollution and build a series of pipelines and tunnels underground to magically and permanently store it for all time. All of this, according to our theory, will be cheaper, more efficient, and more effective than actually transitioning off of fossil fuels and onto renewable energy. Now, don't mind the fact that we are already at the point of having equivalent of stage three cancer with no signs of improvement. We will get healthy by continuing to smoke as long as we exercise along the way to make up for it. And just recently, the world came together for the 26th Conference of the Parties, COP, where it debated what each country needed to do in order to avert complete climate disaster. And after two weeks, the results were in. Instead of setting goals and targets in line with what the science says is necessary, the world's leaders decided to shoot for an unsurvivable world. According to the Sierra Club, a report released by Climate Action Tracker, as well as the United Nations Environmental Program, found that the targets will at best keep temperatures to 2.7 degrees Celsius. The Climate Action Tracker is basing its conclusions on the nationally determined contributions, NDCs, that each country released before the talks began. 
The NDCs spell out how each country plans on cutting their own emissions. Only four negotiating parties at COP had plans that the Climate Action Tracker found acceptable for holding warming to the stated 1.5 degrees Celsius goal. Now, we speak of these temperature targets as being the highest level of warming we will reach by the end of the century. And I'm sure to many listening right now, the end of the century seems very far away. This month, my youngest godson will be turning one. If he even has an average life expectancy, he will be here at the end of the century. And if he lives a uniquely long life, like my great grandmother did, who saw three separate centuries and passed in 2004 at the age of 107, he will be here in the year 2127. There are people alive right now that you know who will personally know if we reached our stated goals. It will not be a gimmick to them to have water to drink and agriculture. It will not be an imagined reality of some far out future. It will be their daily life and their daily nightmare. According to NPR, here's what scientists expect if average global temperatures exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius warming by 2100. At 1.5 degrees Celsius, it's likely that 70 to 90% of coral reefs will die off worldwide. At two degrees Celsius of warming, 99% are lost. You know, right now, Madagascar is experiencing the first famine in modern history to be caused solely by climate change. The Madre River has dried up as the region has not experienced significant rain in the last five years. According to ABC News, Madagascar has produced 0.01% of the world's annual carbon emissions in the last eight decades. But it is suffering some of the worst effects. Now, if we are already experiencing climate-induced disasters and famines right now, what can we expect in 10, 20, or 30 years from now? Why do we insist on playing a game where if we lose, we lose everything? But you know, we won't actually have to wait that long. If we believe what the science says, we will know if we pass the tipping point of runaway climate change, likely in the next few years. It will not be a future generation that finds out if we fail, but your own. Being alive right now as the last generation capable of making the difference that will determine the fate of all generations going forward is a weight we all must bear. Continuing to allow our governments to give away $11 million a minute to support our fossil fuel habit that is literally killing us cannot continue. Setting climate targets based on political science rather than actual physical science cannot continue if we want to keep human civilization, that is. We have a responsibility to hold our governments accountable. We must demand a reduction to actual zero carbon emissions instead of the imagined kick the can down the road promise of net zero. And we must immediately end all fossil fuel subsidies and accept the fact that we cannot fund our destruction and expect to survive.